Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. <clears throat> I've got a lot to do today. There's quite a bit of watering to do in here. Plus, I want to start putting the stain on these um, pieces of timber for my bonsai staging. Um, and once I start doing that, I'll have wet stained pieces of wood lying around all over the grow room until they dry. So I want everything else done in here prior to starting. And then I can shut the door and walk away from it. Might have to change my clothes too. I've got a habit of um, getting paint all over me. But um, this is my only Paphio Pedalum that hasn't been out of the pot. So I don't know what's in the pot, literally. Um, it's a nice looking plant. It's got new growths pushing up here. Um, growths, yes, round here too. So we've got some new growths coming on it. And it looks like it's one of those where it does clump up. In other words, the old parts, the old fans that have bloomed, don't immediately die like some of them do. Um, and this is Paphiopedalum lianum, um, which needs an X on the front because it's a naturally occurring hybrid in the wild, which means it gets a lower case to its name and an X on the front to signify primary cross that occurs in the wild. Um, that's just <laughs> being pedantic basically, but that's what you're supposed to do um, as far as the names are concerned. Um, in, that sort of thing is important if it ever goes in the show obviously. Now when I water this a load of muck comes out the bottom and messes up the water. So I don't know what to expect here, I really don't. It's quite a large pot. Now I know why I'm getting a lot of muck coming out of the bottom, the media has broken down. So you can see the bark is just crumbling. So better late than never, but that probably means I've lost an awful lot of the roots. Yes it does unfortunately. And I don't see, at the moment, I don't see any good roots at all. Which is disappointing. These roots are just gone. I don't think I'm going to have any decent roots left. That's sad. None of these are any good. Well, that's a shame. I don't think it would have made much difference if I'd taken this out of the pot earlier. I think the result would have still been the same. There are some roots I'm going to keep, like here, this is a firm root, it's not soggy. So what we're doing now is we're looking for soggy roots. And any soggy roots need coming off. you just got to feel them. If they're firm, um, they might have lost their growing tip, but some Paphiopedalums have branching root systems, some don't. going round. Anything that's firm can stay. And as I go I'm gently teasing out. For once, I know I often say, oh it doesn't matter if some of the old media stays behind. In this case it actually does because the bark has gone. It's rotting. Well leaving it behind it's not going to get better is it? It'll just get worse. So I want to try and get every bit out if I can. There are some signs of new, new roots growing near the base in places, so we may get a new root system. And the root system is not a total write-off, it's not far off though, it's definitely not good. Been in the pot too long. Literally one at a time.
literally each root. Is it firm? Is it not? If it's not, trim. So that's another great big piece of bark there stuck up between the roots. Which I want off. So the trouble is if you leave old pieces of media, you know, on, on roots that are already a little bit iffy, um, if that media is rotting and it's touching a root, it's, it's just liable to take the root with it. You remove it and it gets some nice fresh media next to, next to it, it might survive. That's actually the base of the plant, I think. Yes, I think we're nearly there now. Just generally cleaning up as I go, you know, around the base of the the plant. Anything that, that looks wet. Right, I think that will do. So these are firm roots. These are not rotten. There's no growing tips on any of them. So we have no growing, actively growing roots at the moment. But where we've got new growths, like here, you can see at the base that it's highly liable to produce some roots. So we've actually got a new growth here, here, and here. All three of those are new growths on this side of the plant. That's most likely where the roots will come from. But, however, we've also got a new growth here and another one inside the plant here, and a larger one here. So there's more than enough new growths on there to hopefully generate a new root system, which is going to do an awful lot better with some nice new media. Now I've got a very badly damaged leaf here, that's physical damage. I'm going to trim it off, simply because it will be subject to deterioration. I don't think there's anything else I need to do. The plant looks quite clean now. Is that another old leaf down in there? No, nope, I think we're okay. So we have a lot of new growths, five, maybe six new growths on this plant. And for a Paphio pedalum that size, that's not bad going at all. And if you look back, you've got spike, spike, spike. So on a plant this size, it's already had three blooms. So I think this has a good future, this plant, providing it can survive this shock and this muck. No wonder. What I was getting was, um, when I was watering it, I was getting that in the water. These tiny little pieces were coming out the bottom of the pot. I will justify yet again using clear pots because if this had been in a clear pot I'd have seen this muck through the pot and I'd have seen, I mean look how much roots have been lost here. Those were good roots once going round the bottom of the pot. What was in the bottom of the pot? Muck. So I can't remember where I got this one, but um, somebody needs a clip round the ear. Anyway, hopefully we have rescued it. Um, as usual, I'll just um, cut, cut off, have a tidy up, and then I'll uh, think about what mix we're going to put this in. I have to rethink Paphio Pedalum mix. Most of my Paphio Pedalums went in, by default, the Let's Grow Some Roots mix. When I come back, I'll discuss why that might not have been the best of ideas. I'll be back. Hi, welcome back. Well, luckily, when you've got a naturally occurring hybrid, you must appreciate that both of these can be found growing in the same place, or they wouldn't be a naturally occurring hybrid, would they? 
So you look up the two individual species that have made up this primary cross and you find contradictions all over the place. So basically I'll put a pop-up of, um, of the names in case I say I'm wrong, at least you can read them then. Insigni. Now this is a strange one because this is a cool grower, so relatively higher elevations and it's found on limestone outcrops whatever a limestone outcrop is but then it's an epiphyte so it's not growing on the ground is it and it's humus loving difficult to achieve as an epiphyte isn't it so I've got three contradictions here it comes from limestone areas but it doesn't grow on the ground yeah or on rocks or anything like that, it's not on the ground, it's an epiphyte. So it's on the trees, or in the trees, in the shrubs, in the bushes, whatever, but it's off the ground. And it's humus loving. So this species must be found in places where there's a lot of debris and stuff collects in the forks of the trees and things like that. Otherwise, if you look at a tree under normal circumstances, there is no humus. <laughs> yeah. It's basically decaying material, decaying plant material. Well, that would have to collect somewhere for it to be available for a plant to grow in it. So that, that's sort of one side of the fence. Cool grower, epiphyte, comes from limestone outcrops but doesn't grow on them, grows up above them and it likes humus. So it's going to get its roots into where there's decaying matter. It's not going to be one of those that you find just on the bark on its own. So that's half the plant. What about the other half then? <laughs> the spicery, uh, oh, I've forgotten what it is now, spicery anima I think it is. The other one is found on rocks as either a terrestrial or a lithophyte. Rocks unspecified can't actually find out whether this is limestone type rock or not. The reason the limestone bit is important is that if you've got a terrestrial or a lithophyte that grows on limestone type rocks then it's going to want an alkaline media. Yeah? If it's not specified you, you can only guess. I believe that if a, if a plant grows on limestone rocks it's going to say so because it's important and it probably wouldn't be found elsewhere so it would be important so although this one is a terrestrial or lithophyte so it does grow on the ground it doesn't specify that it requires limestone type rocks to grow on or in amongst therefore I'm assuming it doesn't necessarily need an alkaline base the other one likes humus rich places to get its roots into well that definitely doesn't like an alkaline base does it because I don't think there is such a thing as alkaline humus <laughs> decaying matter tends to be acidic by nature so we are looking at a pathopedalum that doesn't want an alkaline base due to the two plants that make up this cross that's important is you get some people, the fact that it's called a paphiopedalum, they go chucking lime and various things on top of the pot to keep it alkaline. That's not going to do that one any good at all. And it could even be its demise. Do your homework, that's all I can say. Now I didn't know any of that till I went and looked it up. And I've just looked it up now and found that amount of information in five minutes. It wasn't a big deal. It's just there under your nose. Just put the plant name in and then, then be selective as to what you look, look up. <laughs> anyway, it's going back in a clear version, or nearly clear version, of the one it came out of. Not quite as deep. Um, similar ventilation and everything like that. But now we know about the plant, what I was saying about my let's grow some roots mix I was going to say that it might not be the best answer based on that mix is small bark, so organic, perlite, non-organic and neutral, neither acidic nor um, alkaline, and small pieces of sphagnum moss. 
which initially are not necessarily generating acidity in the media when it's nice and shiny and new, but the older it gets and the more it starts to get to breaking down, the more acidity it will generate. So given that quite a lot of Paphiopedalums do want an alkaline mix because they do come from rocky outcrops that are limestone and they grow on it and in amongst it, yeah, that mix with the moss is not good for those sort of paths. Despite the fact that you might get some good roots long term, it's, it's not ideal for that type of Paphiopedalum. However, it's perfect for this one. <laughs> So uh, I'll, go and, I'll, I'll break off again. I'll go and get me bits and pieces and we'll, we'll mix some stuff up and get this thing potted up. I'll be back. Well, I've just plumped the plant in there temporarily so that I can move it out of the way. I've got some of my large hard bark in the bottom as crocking. The reason why I put bark in there rather than anything else is when path roots actually grow, they readily attach to stuff. So what I wouldn't want is it attaching to things like polystyrene or stuff like that that I might not want to keep longer term. But I want something in the bottom of the pot to stop the bottom of the pot staying wet now while I haven't got a good active root system. Later when I've got a good active root system I can chuck water on it left, right and centre and keep the bottom of the pot moist if that's where a lot of the roots are. So this is my small bark. Now don't forget we're looking at a terrestrial here, or half a terrestrial, and a humus loving one. So what we're looking at is something that doesn't want lots of air and lots of space all around the roots, not really. So that's my small bark, complete with um, pieces of timber. And stones and things like that. <laughs> uh, right, that's that. Then we'll get some perlite in there. Don't forget, I always, I have to, I feel obliged to because this is YouTube. People could be watching this video in isolation that, that don't follow my channel. If you get anywhere near perlite and start shaking it and bashing it around, it will generate dust in the air. That dust in your lungs is permanent. So don't breathe it in. If in doubt, wear a mask. I always keep well away from it. And I'm just after the big bits, not the dust. <laughs> and I want a fair bit. And I just go by eye. I expect when I've finished that the white is not dominant, but not far off. So, you know, you can't see areas of bark with no white mixed in and I'm happy that uh, that's okay like that. Where did I put the lid? the lid? We put the lid back on in case we knock it over. <laughs> well when you're concentrating on one thing it's quite easy to just take a step sideways or something and think oh blast I've just knocked the perlite tub over. So that's those two and then we're going to add some moss into this and um, this is the Bees Grow New Zealand sphagnum moss, which is pretty good quality. It's not the best. There is like a treble A grade of this type of moss. It's the long strand moss, and um, that is excellent stuff. That's the sort of thing you'd get if you were um, repotting, not sarcokai, that's the uh, neophoneshes in the tradi traditional Japanese way where you effectively wrap the roots in a ball of sphagnum moss and if you want a ball of sphagnum moss you need the long strand moss. It has a thicker texture, it's a stronger um, type of moss and it lasts a bit longer and it's three times the price because it's more difficult to obtain. But this bees grow uh, moss is um, environmentally friendly, collected sort of thing. So it's uh, it's not collected direct from the wild. It's sort of farmed, I suppose you could say. But um, 
the wild stocks are not getting depleted and put in bags and sent over to the UK. That's all I'm interested in. So why have we put moss in here then? Likes humus, one of them, yeah? So, and we've got a terrestrial in amongst this as well. Combination of the two, you could even put some fibrous stuff in here. But I, I'm not going to do that because that would keep the, uh, the mix quite wet for some considerable time. And don't forget we're working with a non-active root system here for now. It can always be uh, changed later. The other thing that um, many people have said, including people who specialise in papiopedalums, they're one of the few orchids that don't object to being repotted. They quite like the fresh media. And in some cases it's the repotting that triggers the root growth rather than being um, a seasonal thing that you know I mean a lot of roots on a lot of orchids are se it's seasonal. What I mean by seasonal is they come with a new growth or just behind a new growth or just in front of a new growth and the new growth happen at a certain time of year and so the roots, the regeneration of the new roots become a seasonal event. Not necessarily only once a year but it's to give up to the way the plant grows. Right, that's broken that up into small pieces. We don't want the dust, we just want the moss. <laughs> and you notice the moss is dry. If I was using the moss like this in a mix then I would have soaked it first. This is only small pieces of moss, yeah? And when I water the pot, they will absorb moisture very quickly because they're small. And um, we will get moisture in the pot. <coughs> right, so let's see what we're up to here then. Also, having it dry means it will get in round all these roots without sticking to anything. So, some in the bottom. And then also one thing to remember, these roots don't bend. If you, they're brittle. If you bend them, they snap. And paths can be quite difficult to repot because of that. You can gently tease them away from the side of the pot if they're stopping the plant going where you want it. But don't go mad because your roots will snap. And don't forget a lot of paths are quite slow at growing roots. So broken roots are not replaced easily. Now because I've got new growths coming out in various places on this plant, it's going in the middle of the pot. <laughs> Normally you get, well on, on quite a few orchids, you actually get a, a portion of the plant that is obviously like a front. It's where all the activity is going on. And if you've got an orchid like that, then you want space for that activity to continue. So you try and push the orchid over to one side, leaving the, um, the space for it to carry on with that activity. <coughs> oh, oh, it's early in the day today. It's because I've got a lot to do today. I'm starting early and I wanted to get the... Uh, table freed up so I thought we'll get a repot done. There's not much else going on out here at the moment. And then we check how deep is our orchid because it needs to be sitting on the media not sunken in it. Now what some people do is they use a, a more coarser mix near the top of the pot so that they can sort of sink the plant in. It helps hold it steady but um, <coughs> I don't Bother. I like the plant to sit naturally at the depth it would normally be, which as you can see there, <coughs> you can see that new growth. If I lift it, it, yeah, so it's just sitting on the surface. If you sink your plant too low, you could generate some rot. And if you sink it too high, you might get some roots come out, not in the media. These do not produce aerial roots. It's not a natural phenomenon. 
So you need your roots to get in your media. So always make sure they're deep enough for that to happen without you having to make major adjustments. And I'm happy with that. So that will now get a good watering. And I'm going to continue with the um, business of when something's been repotted, I water it with water with some um, seaweed extract in it. I'm going to continue doing it without throwing everything on the floor. <laughs> How's your heart rate? Nearly <laughs> threw everything on the floor there. That's the smaller tray, see, I'm used to my big one. Um, but um, yes, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> Put me right off my track. What was I going to say? Oh, I've forgotten. <laughs> We've already got a label for this one, so we don't need to uh, worry about the tag. I'll probably think what I was going to say as I play this video back and it gets to that point and I go, ah! In which case there would have been a pop-up and you'd have already seen it by now. <laughs> I love working backwards like this. <laughs> the video hasn't been made yet, it's still on the camera. So, I, you know, I've still got time to play with it. Well, not refilm, I don't do that, but uh, you know what I mean. Anyway, we've got no big gaps. So all of the roots that we've got are going to be touching some media. They will have hydration. And with that number of new growths, I look forward to a good root system. What do I mean by a good root system? Well, I do happen to have one. Oh, you've all seen it before, but just to show what a good root system ought to look like on a path, that's what it should look like. Yeah? So not dark and brittle, some nice bright colours, preferably with some growing tips, but this has had its long growing period. It's having a quiet period now. New roots, roots will start on this again soon, but just there, something that you don't see that often, but it is possible. Path roots branching, little tiny new growths coming out the side of an existing root. Doesn't happen often, they tend to grow linear, you know, they're just one growing tip and they, they can grow round and round the pot two or three times, but um, they don't tend to branch very often, but obviously some do. So that's what you're aiming to get at with your Paphiopedalums, is a, is a pot full of roots and then don't lose them. Make sure you keep track of when you repotted and don't let the media get old and stale. Or you end up with a tray full of muck like I've just had. So I'm just getting a bit of, while I've got the plant under my nose, we'll just get a bit of dust off. Right, so we'll get that watered up and um, pop back on its shelf. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.